Hello. Hello. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, we are thrilled to be joined in the Badger Beer Hour here by Erica and Jessica Jones from Giant Jones Brewing Company. Yay. Woohoo. Got the whole Welcome to the Badger Beer Hour. Thank you for Thank joining you. us. Thanks for having us. This is fun. <laughs> All right. So, uh, we're going to talk. We're going to talk about uh, Christmas pairing beer with Christmas cookies in just a little bit. But first, I wanted to kind of have you guys tell the story of your brewery. <laughs> the ele- what's the elevator pitch after the pitch? Part? <laughs> uh, we're a certified organic brewery run by queer women. Like that's that nails it. <laughs> we have big beers and. This is our American barley wine, and barley wine is the is the culprit. Uh, we fell in love with barley wine when we were living for a few years out in San Francisco Bay Area. If you've ever been to the cheers, if you've ever been to the uh, Tornado, they had a barley wine festival, um, which we would go to every year, and they would have like more than fifty barley wines on tap, and fifty one to fifty six, depending on the year. And you know that that idea of like people getting together around beer was really solidified because you can only try 50 some odd barley wines if you have a group of people (laughs) to share them with because they are big and so we would always get like I don't know we'd get a a flight of all of them and get 10 people around and we just take little tiny sips and pass them around and be very happy at the end of our 50 (laughs) <laughs> yeah, so it was a yeah. barley wine brewery, um, which ultimately was just mechanics of being organic. Uh, like we had two um, non-negotiables. We we're going to open a brewery and it was going to be certified organic. Um, and we figured the only way we could like be at a reasonable price point uh, in the market was to be doing these big beers. Um, so and that allows us to really absorb the cost of organic ingredients. Um, because if we were trying to do organic pale ales, like we're going to be charging like 14 bucks for that six pack. And, um, that's even a, that's a, that's a tougher sell to people, but six bucks for half a liter of barley wine. Like you're like, Oh, that's a great deal. (laughs) Okay. So, uh, and, um, I, we kind of missed it, but you guys are from Madison, um, Wilson street, right? No, Uh, main, main street. Yes. Same building as old sugar distillery. That's right. And and how long how, how long have you guys been open? We opened in 2018. Two and a half um, years. So two and a half years. Yep. And yeah, we're <laughs> we got we got one full year in. And uh, you know, we'll see what a second full year will look like, but <laughs> second full year has looked pretty weird. Yeah. <laughs> so far. How, I mean, how are you how have things been during the pandemic? I know I know you guys have been bottling and um that's been part of the it's been part of the plan from the start uh yeah. a, lot of breweries, a lot of small small taproom oriented breweries have had to kind of shift and you know start canning or doing whatever that was this was always kind of part of the plan for you guys right yeah yeah my i mean my favorite place to drink beer is on my couch so <laughs> i assume that's true of everybody else so like it was really important to us that that was part of what we were doing from the beginning um <clears throat> So it was, I mean, we, there's been plenty of like hiccups and um, tumult this year, uh, (laughs) but there was some level of stability just because we were already in the stores. Like we didn't have to go out and find new accounts. It's just keeping them stocked. Um, Yeah, the biggest, I mean, there's been lots of challenges, but it's been really challenging to have all of our beer get put in bottles because We weren't set up to do that. We were packaging about 50% of a batch into bottles and the rest of it was going into kegs, either for the tap room or for going out to restaurants and bars. And so getting that second 50% of a batch into bottles has proven to be quite a challenge, especially since we did lay off our part-time employees at the beginning. And so it's just the two of us. And so um, luckily, like people are doing a good job of going to the store and buying bottles from local breweries and from regional breweries. And it's, um, you know, those accounts that we had have been, you know, have kept us going. So those, those independent liquor stores that were, um, that we have shelf space at, um, we're at, you know, all the local independent liquor stores and um, a few like small markets, like independent grocery stores, Willie street Mm -hmm. co-op. 
so like that's our that's our main <laughs> that's it right now so <laughs> have, have have you heard that that is a, a thing that people are saying okay we have to start like i mean what i was basically just talking about 10 minutes ago like that people are are buying local with a, a more kind of intentional focus and keeping yeah. Um, there was a huge boom of that this spring, um, like March through May. It was just like all like, spirits, like the spirits industry never had, like they never, um, had the, uh, um, hoarding buying that was happening this spring. Like people weren't hoarding, uh, gin. Um, we, we did the only purchase that we were making this spring were state was state line gin. <laughs> um, but gin is a staple item. <laughs> But for brewery, like if you had to go format, like it was moving um, and like in good volume. Uh, and then this summer when like things cracked open a little bit, that fell off um, for everybody. Yeah. Um, but I think like our, yeah, I mean, we have seen customers lately being like, we want to make sure we're continuing to support small businesses and we are selling well at the small local st stores that we're in partially because they know us and um you know we people who would come into the brewery who are from kind of the area of you know our neighborhood or just beyond like they can't come into the brewery so i, I assume <laughs> and i know that they're buying it at the liquor store um mm -hmm. instead of coming in on a thursday or Friday night are you guys still open for um takeout like we are yeah, yeah. um, doing thursday fridays yeah. um or by appointment um the rules changed for uh how we can take beer sales so we can take beer sales online now um that was new this spring from department of revenue um which makes it so that it makes it way easier to like take an appointment from someone because like they can pick out their beer and we know that yeah. we have it right? yeah you can have it ready right yep yeah we can um, prep it we can prep everybody's order so yeah a lot of people are doing that um you know it's, it is what it is, but like we have been able to keep bottles going, although we're, we're just not able to bottle enough, <laughs> the two of us and I, I mean, are you manually capping each one? Yeah. Yeah. So yep. we have a forehead filler that is a man manually filled and then I manually cap it. And we are very excited because partially because of this whole shenanigans, we were able to find a really good deal on a bottling line, like a mechanical- Like a real one. Rotary. 16 head rotary fill. Your, oh. your arms aren't gonna be sore anymore. Nope. I know, I'm like, why, why do my wrists hurt all the time? It's like, oh, yeah. because I keep like doing all these things. Poor Jessica's like moving about val four valves with her thumbs. Like she's gonna have like weird, <laughs> odd like muscular thumb. All the Nintendo training from one from the 80s. <laughs> you'll be Pay really off. yeah you'll be really good at all the video games. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So um the, uh thanks for telling that story. It's uh, I, I I tend as a, as an interviewer I tend to kind of just keep going but but let's talk about cookies. Greg you want to jump in here with the cookies? I don't have any cookies. I'm I'm an idiot. Oh I'm sorry. I know it's bad. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> What's up, ladies? <laughs> I love having the my favorite thing about the job. This is having the controls. To just, uh, anyway, <laughs> I never got that impression of you that you wanted all the control. Right. I need. I need my own. Yeah, it's caught. <laughs> I need my own like catch line. You are the weakest link or something. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so I, was, I, I want all the control. That's I, why I'm a brewer. <laughs> this is true. I've been sipping on this wonderful American barley wine. Um, so we just packaged this today. Oh. I haven't even had the chance to put it in our online store. People are people were asking me like, "Hey, hey!" I was like, "I don't know. Tomorrow, Thursday." Um, so you are getting it pre everybody. We this is our our first drink of it too. So. <laughs> And y'all gave me cookies too. Uh -huh. so you're gonna have to tell me what cookies to eat. But before, I just want to make sure that I told everybody I had this, and this is this. I don't know if you saw my eye rolling and my smiles before, but <laughs> that's what I was smiling and loving here. So, um, 11%. Uh, so I know it's a Wisconsin beer Wednesday, but I don't know if you're planning to get schnockered. <laughs> well, and I just opened this bad boy too, so um. Yo, nice. wonderful 
That so, one's under 10%. It's only 9.8% alcohol. So it's all only. Um, I don't, I, Jessica, generally speaking, I don't see you as a person who likes to talk about yourself, but I'm going to talk about you now. Um, Jessica <laughs> is a fan Cicerone. Jessica's also a master beer judge, right? Grandmaster. Like, She's a grandmaster. Right, grandmaster. Sorry, I forgot the grand. So sure. you are one of the people that we could really like learn a lot about as far as food pairing. And I do, ha I still have some friends that are like, beer, what? Beer pairing, that's not. Nah. So we're, before we even get there, what do you say to those people who are like beer pairing deniers? Because there are some. Sure. Uh, well, then they might as well just deny that anything pairs, right? Um, that they, they, you might as well just deny there's no such thing as flavor synergies um, mm -hmm. uh, or um, uh, that physics don't exist, right? Because like beer is um, has a pairing superpower and it's just simply because it's carbonated because um, the carbonation physically cleans your tongue like a scrubbing bubbles commercial. Uh, mm -hmm. there's, um, mm -hmm. so it scrapes fat off, but it also volatizes... Um, things from what you just ate. Um, so one of my favorite things to do, one of my favorite pairings we've done at the brewery was a beer and tea pairing um, because it just lifted whatever lingering tea was on your tongue right off, um, which it will do with anything else, but it was already wet, right? Um, because most of what aroma is, I mean, most of flavor is aroma. There's only a few things you take that's taste, right? It's a uh, sour, salty, sweet, um, bitter, uh, umami, carbonation, metallic, rancid fat. Um, after that, it's all aroma. Um, and so if everything's aroma, um, having something that's gonna like actually like volatize it in your mouth, um, so you get that retro nasal uh, experience of the aromas is just incredible. Plus it uh, refreshes your palate automatically. That's why like beer and pizza, any beer and pizza is a good pairing because the carbonation takes it off your tongue. Like that's why beer and soda is a good pairing. Too. I mean, um, uh, pizza and soda works too, um, mm. right? And like gotcha. wine just doesn't have, like, I mean, like sure there's cava and champagne and Prosecco and stuff, but like most um, wine doesn't have the carbonation. So like beer and cheese will always be a better pairing unless it's a carbonated wine. Yes. Excellent. So, so, then what's up with beer and cookies? How does that is that the, right. is it the same science? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Right. Well, and then so like once like I mean I mean we I can just go on just about carbonation, right? Um, but uh, pairings there's there's different types of pairings too, right? And um, there's a few like quick principles. Um, and I actually just wrote an article on this for Edible Madison. Um, if you go to the Edible the Madison, issue. yeah, the fall mm -hmm. issue of Edible Madison, I wrote a primer on pairings um, that went over these basics. Um, but like you need the impact of things to match. So like if you have something that's uh, really strongly flavored and something that's lightly flavored, like one's gonna wash the other out and it's not gonna be that interesting. Um, and then there's things that will just clash. Right, so like caramel and citrus clash, um, and there is all sorts of stuff like that. So like, if you can avoid clashing things and get your intensities matched, like because beer is carbonated, like it'll be fine. But then like you can have things that are just like resplendent glory, right? Um, and I think that usually happens um, either when you have something cancel out. Uh, so like one of my favorite pairings is an IPA and blue cheese because the bitterness in both just falls out because they match. And then you taste all the fruitiness on either side. Um, and it's just like both become like super complex. Um, or when you have things that contrast and like push each other um, towards their extremes, um, which I always think is really lovely, which speaking of cookies um, <laughs> with this barley wine, there's like these like deep pomelo things and then um, a touch of oak, um, and a little bit of blackberry, um, all coming from the hops. Um, and this is a, actually a little more um, grapefruit than usual. I wasn't able to get Centennial hops this year, so I had to um, use Cascades and blend it in a little bit of Bravo, which shifts things a little bit. Um, but you do what you have to do, especially when you're making organic beer, right? Like there are so few ingredients available to me. Um, but so that, uh, uh, Erica made these ginger cookies and that ginger should contrast to those um, uh, citrus flavors 
and just like mm. hopefully get both to pop. This is, I made this cookie because my friend, our friend Emily always has like a Christmas party and this, she always has these cookies. She has like a fridge full of beer and then she always has these cookies and I'm always like, oh my God, I need to eat like all of those cookies. And I think I usually eat like a, a dozen. It's a Smith, it's Smitten Kitchen mm. recipe, ginger snaps, really easy. So, so one one question I had was, I, I you're, you're doing things with your mouth here. So what, how do you, how do you do, how, how do you like, what are the mechanics of pairings? Like what, what do you, um, do you, do you eat, eat the thing first? Do you drink first? How does that, how does that work? Uh, I mean, it just doesn't matter. Right. I mean, so like, um, you're going to have a different, uh, impression whether you go beer than food or food than beer. Um, and so I, um, we used to monthly do these things, um, at the brewery where, we'd present a pairing with another producer uh, with cheese or chocolate or whatever, right? Um, and I'd tell everyone to do it differently. And then when we were talking about the pairing after everyone had experienced it, um, I would get people's impressions whether they had one first or the other um, because that like shifts your dynamic. And it's, it's a choose your own adventure game, right? Um, but you can do things to refresh your palate in between. So like swishing with water is fine, is, is good, but like really sniffing your sleeve uh, that resets your olfactories. That's swishing with water or having um, a plain cracker for your nose because it resets your, if you reset your olfactories, um, then all those things that are aroma are fresh again. Um, so like water and the shirt sleeve. And, and the thing is like your shirt doesn't even have to be clean uh, because <laughs> you're, I'm serious, right? Uh, because you're neutral to yourself. Right. So if you're right. smelling yourself, you're smelling, you're, you're, um, if you're not, then maybe you should, change. I mean, sure. Like we all have these moments where it's like, oh, I, smell. I need to, I need to groom. <laughs> but I'm, pandemic, right. man. I'm not doing laundry every day. Come on. No. no. <laughs> all right. Um, what do you think of the pairing between mm -hmm. the ginger snap and the American barley wine, which I know you're drinking? Um, I think it's great. It really, um, especially, when you eat the cookie and then you drink the beer, you get more. I I felt like I got a, like a little bit even more of a ginger hit, mm. uh, mm -hmm. and kind of took off. If, if it kind of felt like it kind of get, get exposed the barley wine a little bit more, so I got more of like an alcoholic end mm -hmm. than yeah. I did before when I was drinking it before. But I also let it warm up and it's been in my hands too, so I'm like. Nice. I agree. I mean, so the other thing about like tasting things is like whatever you taste is correct, right? Like that's always my disclaimer at these things. Like if I describe something that you didn't experience, um, that just means I experienced something that you didn't, right? And if you ex tasted something that I didn't, that just means because everybody's um, lab equipment is calibrated differently. Um, mm. We're all different, sensitive to different compounds at different thresholds. So like it's just going to be different. Period. Um, Period. And Snickerdoodles goes great with this. Um, it accents the um, the cinnamon for at least for me. Thank you for Snickerdoodles. And then switch it around, and then cinnamon. Really. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So here's the key. I remember. So like, I'm not mm -hmm. a great baker, and so every year at the holidays, I rem I relearn how to like bake cookies and it, what I learned is the key is butter and like a lot, a lot of butter. And so yeah. it doesn't really matter. Oh, okay. <laughs> There's a lot of butter and it's gonna be good. So uh um, oh, wait, wait, wait. so Jessica has to be the baker. Okay. I made all the cookies. I, yeah. I made them because she was busy making other stuff. Well yeah. I don't know who's you know we're we're broadcasting to a lot of people. So I am personally friends with Jessica on Facebook. <laughs> Jessica, we're going off on a little tangent here, but sorry, it's it's appropriate, I think, for me. Whatever. <laughs> Jessica does some crazy. Jessica, can you do tell us real fast so we can go back to the cookies? But Jessica does some crazy thing every year where she bakes a cake every day or every two days or what the hell? So <laughs> every day, every day. we have a game at our house. We call it Cake Season. Um, okay. And uh, whatever age you're turning, the last digit is how many birthday cakes you get. Um, so, <laughs> right. Uh, well, this year was cake peak season because 
cake. This is 2020 peak yeah, yeah. cake. And our, our birthdays are a Cheap. month apart. Um, and I turned 39 and Erica turned 40. And so I got nine birthday cakes and Erica got 10. Oh, that's not zero cakes? Ten. What sort of monster you makes a zero <laughs> I mean, you could just kind of go with the nine. I don't know. I, I love the 10. The 10's great. Yeah. <laughs> Ten birthday cakes. If We've all decided to me, I turn it up to eleven. <laughs> <laughs> We've also decided once you get to one hundred eleven, you can request all of your cakes on the same day, um, so that you can just eat them and be done. And, and, <laughs> and Landon, Landon, just so you know, Landon and Chris, these aren't just you know like apple cake. I mean, these are some serious cakes. I had no idea that the cake even existed until I saw it on your Facebook page. <laughs> so that's not like, when, when Erica that. said that she wasn't a baker, I was like, it has to be just. <laughs> well, I had to make her cakes, but my cakes generally turn out as, uh, what, it, what do I call them? I don't know. I'm, once I started our oven on fire while baking a cake. <laughs> so. It was the fall of 2018. And she made a like cake that was had like forty dollars of ingredients in it. Really and it was like our last forty dollars. <laughs> and we just opened the brewery, and I made this like chocolate stout cake, and it was like so much batter. And then I was like, okay, I need to put this in pans. And I had to like it said it wanted this many pans. And I was like, okay, but I don't have that size pan. So I looked up on the internet. Don't do that. What volume pan? And it was wrong. <laughs> And all of my cake went all over the oven. Started on fire. Oh, but every, I hear everything you're on the internet is true. Anyway. Totally uh, false. Speaking of things on the internet, beer and cookies. <laughs> right. So the, um, I gave you guys, um, I, well, we exchanged beer and um, um, curbside, of course. And I gave you guys... Um, peanut butter cookies with that uh, you know, Hershey um, kiss on it. Do you what, would you guys, what what style would you guys suggest for that one? Stout for sure. And what 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 are we trying to get like a chocolate peanut butter thing going on? Uh, I mean, in reality, it's a Hershey's kiss, so it's just going to get driven over by the stout. Okay, um, but but we should. But that that similar internal mechanic of the peanut butter and the the chocolate on there, mm -hmm. um, we should get some of that. Um, and like if you in approaching a cookie plate, um, like these big beers are kind of a superpower. Like if you have one beer to sit down with uh, at a cookie plate, like grab a barley wine, like a hundred percent, because there is just so many layers of complexity in there. Um, otherwise, like a big stout or um, I'm like, this would be a good place for barrel aged beers too, mm. uh, because the intensity is going to match. Um, because with all of that butter and all of that sugar, you need something that's going to stand up to it. Um, and um, I mean, pastry stouts would work, but you're, it's just going to be like balancing a cookie with a cookie. Right, right. <laughs> the sugar. So. Um, like it's, it sounds like, a, like to me, it just sounds cloying. Um, like the last time I had store-bought mm. um, eggnog, and cookies, it was just like too much sugar, <laughs> sugar yeah. high. What do you call your peanut butter chocolate kiss cookies at your house, Greg? Because I know everybody has similar cookies, but they often have different names. Um, those peanut butter cookies with the Hershey. On. <laughs> <laughs> That's the cookie I'm right. They call them peanut butter blossoms. Oh, okay, okay. Chris, what do you call them? Because I know you saw. I know you saw mine um, before yeah. the show started. Those, that's one of my favorites that my mom makes. I, I don't I don't know. I think we just call them maybe peanut butter kisses. Mmm, yeah. that's a good name. Sounds sticky. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like. Yeah. But um, so, yeah. I don't, I, no, it's cool, Landon. Um, show everybody your. Do you have a pair in there, Landon? Do you have um, you have an interesting cookie, and we can talk about that too. First of all, is my mic working again? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, thank God. Okay. Uh, I ate most of it. I had two. Uh, I, I've been having beer, so what better? You know, you got to have some more carbs. So uh, the Norwegian people call these krumkaka. 
I have no Norwegian people in my house, nor am I Norwegian. So this this is a Pitzel. Um, it's an Italian, very thin. You can see it's very, very thin cookie. Uh, this one, I think, has um, toffee in it. Ooh. So uh, my wife actually got creative. She's, she's Italian. Um, she had made uh, half chocolate, half toffee, but Ooh. those last so she made like 120 of them they're gone uh, so these yeah so these uh these she made just tonight um i'm pairing these with uh an ice box mm. oh. wow. and and what are they where out they, they look like wafers or they look like yeah they're they're super thin yep wow um but are, is it like is it is it snappy or is it okay? Snappy. Yep. Snappy. Yep. Snappy. All right. All right. Um, I'm so glad. I'm what so glad I married into an Italian family. <laughs> yeah. Not everybody can roll up on a nice rock land. And what else would you? Um, what one of the beers I like to talk about too. I don't know if you want to speak on it. Is um, I know it's a little bit long and the two still have them, but I know some people still have October festivals. Oh, sure. Would Oktoberfest go good with cookies? Oh, yeah. Yeah, um, a little bit long like, like especially what Landon's eating, um, like, with, especially if he doesn't have the toffee in the center, like, like those cookie things. Um, a lot of the Norwegian uh, cookies, like, um, you know, there's ones that look like a tiny pie shell. Those are called sandbuckle. Right, and the, and the little deep fried things. But, those are called, um, Oh my God! Trum kaka. No, no, no. Trum kaka are the like what Landon was eating, but they put them in. You make a cone shape, but you don't fill them with anything because you're Norwegian, and so it must be yeah. as bland as possible. Iron. Rosette. Rosettes, right? So like rosettes would be great with an Oktoberfest <laughs> because there's so little sugar there. Like you're just really dealing with like slightly sweetened crisp uh, flour, right? So like those are places where something like uh, you know, especially a Martin style October. Um, would work really great there um, because any amount of browning um, you have, like the Maillard that happened on that cookie would uh, harmonize um, and hopefully compound uh, all of the Munich malts happening. Right, because there's that, that Maillard reaction in with the malts and yeah. Yep, it's the exact same thing. The same things happened on that cookie. Like when that cookie starts to brown, the same thing happened to make the Munich malt. So, so yeah, yeah um, Landon, um, Landon, is is that what you have like a stroopwafel or waffle? Or, it is. Somebody just put that on there. It it kind of looks the stroopwafel. They put the caramel in the middle, and it's like two wafers. But if you had just one wafer, I think it'd be similar, or like a waffle cone. Ah, uh, is that what it's? Is that what it? Is that what it's like, Landon? Uh, no, Stroop waffle like uh, like this. It has that small layer of caramel or whatever in it, mm -hmm. um, and then it's it's almost uh, two cookies. Mm -hmm. That and then I mean super thin cookies. The, the thing that we're all wondering: really, are you just eating like a waffle cone that's flattened out without the ice cream? Um, it's um, cannoli. Mm -hmm. uh, that's flat. Yeah. All right, all right. Well, because an American waffle has malt powder in it. That's part of that flavor. Oh. Yeah. Interesting. All right, Jessica. So you brought out, we, we talked pretty extensively or a little bit extensively about the barley wine and your guys love a barley wine. And that was, I didn't know barley wine was a style of what you ladies do us. So that's wonderful. But um, so then what 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 can we definitely pair with a stout? Um, they're big time now. They're all over the place. People love to drink them during the winter. So um, what kind of cookies we can, when we grab our stouts this week, what, what mm -hmm. kind of cookies can we uh, try to get made? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Buy? Um, and uh, those who have um, anise flavors in their Christmas cookies, uh, so like a lot of the German tradition cookies have um, anise seed or fennel seed, um, like anything with those types of flavors, like will play really well with the roast. Um, Things with fruit, so like if you have thumbprint cookies around, like um, that'd be pretty exquisite. Um, not if there's mint jelly, probably though. Like mint 
clashes with a lot of beer flavors. Um, mm -hmm. Well, and stouts have that real like mm -hmm. coffee, roasty flavor, which. Oh, very roasty. Yeah, mm -hmm. this is very nicely roasty. Mm. Yeah, I get a lot of like espresso notes. So we made these little these little cookies that we gave you, Greg. They're mm. anise drops. Anise drops. New, new recipe to try. Uh, they have a lot of anise in them. So if you don't like anise, don't make them. See? <laughs> yep. <laughs> They're light. They're very light. Yeah. They're kind of crunchy. Yeah, you can just shake them all day. <laughs> They're kind of Stop like messing with me, Jessica. <laughs> <laughs> You're always messing with me, Jessica, damn it. Wow, nice. It's because I love you, Greg. Hmm. What is that, anise? That's anise. Yeah. Lots of anise. Hmm. Well, and then um, with the once the stout's in my mouth, like, it goes from being um, like first it's aquavit, then amaro as some like vanilla things kick in, um, and then it sort of tastes like Coke, like Coca Cola. Yeah, but you know, not mm. disgusting. Like whoa, it's whoa, gross. Whoa, you just disparage Coke. Yep. Yep. What? I'm about to disparage something. I so, can go back and talk about when uh, when so the wait. barley wine and snickerdoodle tasted like Seven Up, and I I panicked and tried to rethink my life. <laughs> wait, so anise, um, this is this is licorice, right? Yeah, yeah. Anise has liquor is licorice flavored. <laughs> Black licorice, anise, fennel—they're oh. all the same chemically. Y'all made me eat licorice. Props. Yeah. <laughs> is that, that what you know, I would have not never your Not your jam? <laughs> no, but I don't like jam. I don't like the the licorice jelly beans. No, but, but it I brings like out that anise though, as you were saying, when you put the stout in your mouth. Absolutely. If you like, if you like anise, man, this is good. If you don't, uh, yeah, then probably don't go there. Yeah. <laughs> Last and certainly not least, what is this oh one? Oh, yeah, this cookie. Okay, so our cookies were all like spicy, spice based. Okay. This is called an, uh, a nutmeg log, but again, I have to relearn how to bake cookies every year. And so they didn't really turn out as shaped like logs. <laughs> they kind of just turned out like. Yeah. No, that's what it kind of is. Yeah. Like wood chips. You're like a nutmeg blob. Um, but they taste really good. They're nutmeggy. They have you. You can use rum to flavor them. I used some uh, almond mm. and frosting with a lot of nutmeg in the dough. Nutmeg mm. on the I like nutmeg. I cleansed so. my palate and went straight back to the beer. So <laughs> you all saying this with the barley wine or this with the or both or the, the stout? What do you think? Nutmeg. I don't know. I just love nutmeg. What does it oh, go? Okay. <laughs> not for nothing. All right. I think it's gonna be stout with stout. these two. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 it's stout. Yeah, but really, wow. I a big English beer. I mean, so like mm. an old wow, ale, wow. Or wine, or our Burton ale, like that's where my money would be. Like, um, or going to like a like um, playing with a Weizenbach. Um, would be really fun because um, nutmeg is chemically similar to um, the, uh, <laughs> the 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 the, the uh, clove phenol in there. Like you're playing in the same territory, so like you might get that clove to cancel out, um, and then get to taste all the esters and the malts beneath it. Wow, is that from the yeast uh, in the Weizenbach? Oh, yeah, yeah, yep. Wow, and uh, <laughs> wow, and um, I don't know why you mentioned your bird now. Nobody can get it because it sells out in like two seconds. No, so, we've got uh, it. We've got it. We've got it. It's what? I mean, there's some at the brewery. Oh, really? We got it. There's yeah. not those scotch ales. I mean, it also like disappears from like we make bird now, and it just like flies. Right. <laughs> well, wait. So, do you have bird now at the brewery now? We yeah. do. Oh well, what? Are, I, should, I almost need you. Why am I here? <laughs> <laughs> Why do I do? You? you should go. 
<laughs> All right. These things today. <laughs> right. I should have said put a case of that Burton nail on my. Ah, okay. Well, we got work on this. I went to your website. I thought it said sold out. Oh. Um, like, well, I mean, so um, we are like our bottling process right now is like hopefully we get some of a package right out of the tank, but then we're putting everything into kegs, half barrel kegs, and bottling out of oh, half barrel kegs. So like it's kind of cyclical. Gotcha. Um, and it's like, what are we getting done this week? And like, and things don't move at a constant rate anymore. Um, it's total fits and starts. It'll be like, oh, look, we sold no dark lights in box this week. Oh, look, we sold all of the dark lights in box this week. <laughs> like, and it's just like, there's no rhyme or reason to how things move anymore. Um, so like, wow. the uh, sold out on our web. So if it's on our website, it means that like, it's probably we got the back. liquid. It's just probably not in the tiny vessel at the moment. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. We're all gonna be really awesome at life after this year. <laughs> right. I, I, We're never gonna be able to do anything. <laughs> well, ladies, it's been fantastic, fun, wonderful. Um, we've talked about cookies way longer than we thought we'd do. Um, we do. We're the badge of beer hour, so if we don't get out of here in an hour, um, well, I don't know what happens. We, get, we, get the, we have to pay the luxury tax. <laughs> oh, that's it. Right. Yeah. The, the Giannis tax, we have to pay that. Um, <laughs> I was wondering if I was liver based. Thanks for coming on and imparting your knowledge and showing us um, any any last notes about cookies and pairing and beer. And the best about way to know if a pairing is going to work is to try it. So bake a lot of cookies and drink a lot of beer. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we go for all sorts of pairings that, like, oh, that didn't pan out. And then you just try again. Like, oh no, I ate and drank more. Darn. Yeah. <laughs> Happy 2020. Yeah. So we eat, drink, and uh, find something exquisite. Cheers. Thanks for having us. Awesome. Thank you. Um, absolutely.